Coming up on Hands on iOS, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about using Control Center on your Apple Watch. Hands on iOS is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOI. Folks, one of my most popular episodes of Hands on iOS was an episode where I covered everything you needed to know about Control Center on your iPhone. So I thought it would be good to talk about Control Center on the Apple Watch. In fact, I had one listener write in to mention the amazing, wonderful, and awesome light feature that is on the Apple Watch. And it's a little bit different from the one that's on iPhone. So there's a lot to cover. Let's get started. All right, so you can see I've got my Apple Watch cam all set up so you can see the bits and pieces of the Apple Watch and everything involved. So the first thing that we're going to do is access Control Center, and it's very simple to do that. We swipe up from the bottom, and there's Control Center. You folks might remember that if you've been using iOS for a while, because it's a lot like accessing Control Center on phones that have a home button. So now that we are in Control Center, we can start to talk about the different things that Control Center features. If you've got an Apple Watch with cellular, then the first one is going to be there. And if you do not have an Apple Watch with cellular service, you can easily check by looking at the uh, the digital crown here. If you've got the red circle around the outside, that means you've got a cellular Apple Watch. If there's no red circle, then you have just a Wi-Fi Apple Watch. Tapping on this will bring up cellular options, and you can see that you can simply switch that button off to turn off the cellular radio in your Apple Watch. Very easy, and what this allows you to do is make calls and actually get access to the internet even if you aren't around your iPhone or you aren't around a Wi-Fi network. So it's quite nice, but it is important to understand that using this feature uh, on its own, going out with just your Apple Watch and nothing else, does use more battery power every time the watch has to connect to the cellular network. We'll tap done to come out of that and go to the next one. As you might imagine, this one is Wi-Fi. So tapping and holding down on that option brings up some Wi-Fi settings. I'm currently connected to my Wi-Fi. You can see some other networks that are around. Uh, clearly, somebody is having a bit of an existential crisis, given the name, uh, the SSID for that Wi-Fi network. And you can scroll through here and see some of the different options that are available and the auto hotspot setting. What that means is if there is a hotspot around that iPhone knows is part of your uh, account, then it can actually ask to join that hotspot if there are no other connections available. So for me, for example, it could connect to the hotspot on my iPhone if there was no other network available. It's already connected to Ashmead, my main Wi-Fi network, and you can see personal hotspots I have available, uh, but I don't need to make an adjustment to that. I can also toggle on and off the Wi-Fi button. We tap done, and I wanna also show that simply pressing uh, that button will disconnect the Apple Watch from the Wi-Fi network, and pressing it again will reconnect it. Same goes for that cellular button, turning on and off cellular service. Now, one of my all-time favorite features for Apple Watch, and one that on its own could sell me on the Apple Watch, is the ability to ping my iPhone when I've lost it. So chances are you're going to have your Apple Watch strapped to your wrist, and that means that you want to go and find your iPhone if it ever gets lost. So I suddenly can't remember the last place that I put down my iPhone. What do I do? Well, I can simply press or tap, rather, this button, which shows an iPhone with some little uh, sound waves coming out of it. We'll tap that, and it immediately pings my iPhone. Well, my iPhone happens to be right here, so that's not much of an issue. I can easily see it and find my iPhone based on that noise. Now, 
you should understand that my iPhone is currently uh, in silent mode. It's almost always in silent mode. And even with silent mode enabled, as long as you can see in the top left corner, the green iPhone uh, icon, that means that it is connected to the iPhone. So that is something else that you should understand when you become disconnected from your iPhone, or rather the Apple Watch becomes disconnected from your iPhone, it will show a red iPhone with a line through it, letting you know, mm, I don't currently have a connection to the iPhone, you might want to come back into uh, that range. Up next is the battery of your iPhone. Now, because my Apple Watch is currently charging, you can see very clearly that uh, it is green. That would not be green if the Apple Watch was not charging. Instead, it would just be a plain white color. But uh, tapping on that lets you see more of that information, including just how much battery there is, how far it is from being full, and the current status of the battery, which is that it's charging. Tapping power reserve will put the Apple Watch into power reserve mode, which is a very low power mode with hardly anything lighting up on the screen so that your Apple Watch can conserve battery until you go and charge it. It's important to understand that once you put it in power reserve mode, you cannot take it out again unless you charge your Apple Watch. So just be aware of that. Apple will warn you whenever you tap the power reserve button of that exact uh, thing. Now we'll tap done and we'll scroll down. And now we've got some more features here. Up first is the mute button or silent button. So this button is, as you might imagine, a way to turn on and off actual noise alerts on your Apple Watch. So I always have this turned off. I have no reason to bug people with sounds from my Apple Watch. So I simply have that turned on at all times. And this just means that it's only taptically activating my Apple Watch. So I will get notifications by a little tip, tip, tip on my wrist. I don't ever have to have the ching, boom, boom sounds that uh, I find annoying myself and I'm sure others are not interested in hearing. But you can turn on and off that feature simply by pressing that button. It's akin to flipping the switch on the side of your iPhone to activate silent mode. Next is the do not disturb button by, you can see that that is currently on right now because I'm doing a show, but this actually, depending on the setting that you have in the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, will mirror the iPhone or exist separately as a, a, a feature just on your Apple Watch. I have it so that it mirrors, meaning that if I turn on do not disturb on my Apple Watch, it also activates it on my iPhone and vice versa. If I enable it on my iPhone, it also turns it on on the Apple Watch. You may want those separate, and that is how you can do that. If I tap to turn it off, that's going to turn it off on both my iPhone and my Apple Watch. If I tap it again, it's going to actually pop up with some information here for different versions of Do Not Disturb. I can turn it on and keep it on. I can turn it on for an hour, at which point it will shut off. I can turn it on until this evening, meaning that it will uh, turn off at some point in the evening. On until I leave, meaning when I leave my home, then it will turn off. Or on until the end of an event. That is one of my favorite ones because I can sync this up with my calendar. And it means that during a show... I have Do Not Disturb turned on, but when the show comes to an end, it will automatically turn off because I often forget to turn off Do Not Disturb, and then people are trying to contact me after a show is over, and I can't turn it back, or I forget to turn it back off again. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on for an hour because hopefully I'll be done with this episode before an hour has elapsed, and let's move on to the next settings. This next one probably isn't going to um, be of much concern for you for a while, but it is called theater mode. And originally, it was intended as a way to keep your phone, or rather your Apple Watch, from lighting up the screen when you were at the theater. So by enabling this setting, tapping on it, what it will do is the Apple Watch will turn off the next time that after you've you know looked at it, the screen will darken, and it will completely go off. And then moving your wrist up, which would normally activate the Apple Watch screen or brighten the Apple Watch screen if you have an always on display, instead of doing that, it will simply keep it dark. So the only way to then turn on the screen is by tapping one of the buttons on the side to actually enable the screen. I'll turn that feature off. And the next one is another favorite of mine. This is what I call shower mode, but it is a feature that is available to anyone who wants to uh, do 
water-based activities. So if you go to the beach, if you are a swimmer, if you, uh, again, are hopping in the shower, and we actually had a listener recently on iOS Today who mentioned being a mail carrier and being in the rain, well, this is the feature for you. This keeps the Apple Watch from registering touches on the screen, meaning that it is not going to tap into apps, it's not going to launch complications, it's not going to do anything actively on the Apple Watch, but instead will keep the screen from being able to be tapped by water that might hit the screen. So I'm going to turn this on because it's it doesn't stop there, folks. When this is turned on, Control Center UC goes away, and tapping on the screen simply turns on and off the display. I'm charging the watch right now, so it's a little bit different, but that is the extent of the capacitive touch feature that is available when you have this mode turned on. This episode of Hands on iOS is brought to you by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets you access the internet as if you're in a different country. It's fast, simple, and you can stream everything in HD quality with zero buffering. Stream from Netflix, Amazon Prime, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and many more. Fire up the app, change your location, hit connect, and then refresh. I have used ExpressVPN to watch the British version of The Circle on BBC iPlayer. If you use my link right now, at expressvpn.com slash HOI, you're going to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash HOI. So to disable the water feature, we simply take the digital crown and turn it upward. By turning it upward, it is going to say, hey, turn the digital crown to unlock and eject water. Now the Apple Watch is unlocked and now taps will register. So you can see I can swipe up and down on the Apple Watch and it's registering those. So what happened? What does that mean to eject water? Well, the Apple Watch will actually emit a tone that can push water out of the speakers of the Apple Watch. It's very cool. We'll swipe up and we will keep rolling along here. Up next is the feature that a listener had mentioned, and that is the light feature for Apple Watch. There are three modes, so we'll tap on that. And the first one is a simple white bright light. You can see that at first it lets you choose and it's darkened, but then the display cranks up super high and it gets very bright and actually works as a flashlight. We can go to the next mode, which is a flashing light. Again, it will get very bright and the time goes away and it emits a very bright light as it flashes. So you can sort of signal. And then the last one, which is my favorite, and that is a red light. The reason why this is my favorite is because it is quite bright, but it's perfect for nighttime use. If you're trying to find your way to the bathroom or you need to find the uh, the place where you put your keys into the door or some other thing where you don't want to sort of blast anyone's retinas with bright white light, but you need to find your way around, that's what the red light is perfect for. It has to do with the way that light waves work. And red waves are uh, long and less energetic than blue light waves. Blue light waves are short, super energetic, so they can actually reach farther and hit your eyes a lot quicker, whereas red light waves do not. So you'll notice that if you were to shine a uh, a very bright sort of 5,000K um, blue light and put it in a room and turn it on, that light is going to reach across the expanse of the room. Whereas if you take a red light, so a very dark red light like this, and put it in a room, that light's not going to reach to the other corners of the room. So that is why this red light is one of my favorite things that comes on the Apple Watch. But simply swiping between and then letting uh, the watch sort of have a moment, and then it will load. The other way to trigger it is by actually taking your arm and your wrist and rotating it so that you can kind of have it on your wrist and move it around to see where you are going. All right, up next we have uh, airplane mode. If you're on an airplane, I'm sorry, uh, but in the event that you are on an airplane or if you're having trouble with connection, I sometimes use this just because I will have issues uh, getting Apple Watch to connect either to Wi-Fi or to its cellular radio, I can use airplane mode. And so turning that on turns off, well, let's see, boop, turns off the signals, the radios, 
and then turning it off again will turn on those signals and radios. So then it reconnects to Wi-Fi and to its cellular service. Then we've got the AirPlay button. This button lets you play audio to, for example, uh, some AirPods. So if you have music or some other uh, type of audio saved on your Apple Watch, some folks will put podcasts on their Apple Watch, for example, then you want the audio to play instead of from the Apple Watch itself from the device that's connected. You can also scroll down and connect a device so a Bluetooth device of any sort can connect to the Apple Watch. Then it's walkie-talkie. Now, this is a feature that um, many people might not know about because it was an app that was released for the Apple Watch that just hasn't gotten a lot of attention. But there are a few people out there, and you can see that I currently have uh, walkie-talkie turned off. I can tap on that button to turn walkie-talkie on, and that means that I am now active and available for walkie-talkie sessions. Now, if someone were to try to communicate with me who I've added to the walkie-talkie app, they would be able to send me messages from the Apple Watch very easily using the microphone on the side as well as the speakers, and we could communicate back and forth. Turning that off again turns off my availability on uh, walkie-talkie, and I do that for two reasons. It's going to save you battery life, and also it keeps you from getting surprise walkie-talkie uh, messages in the event that that happens, I don't know anyone who is using walkie-talkie right now. But again, there probably are some folks. So if you're out there, I love it. I'm glad that you use walkie-talkie and that you have uh, use for it. I think it's a great feature. And then the last one is a feature that's not yet available on watchOS 6, but will be coming in watchOS 7, and it is simply a bedtime mode. So I'm not going to talk much about that one, but you can enable bedtime mode with watchOS 7. So now that you've got all of these figured out, what if you don't need or want all of these different icons? Well, then you can scroll all the way down to the bottom, tap edit, and you can see that these three can, or rather these four here, uh, can be removed, and some of the ones up here too, including theater mode, which I'm going to leave on, even though I very rarely use. And uh, oh man, why would you ever want to remove that ability to ping your iPhone? That's such a great one. But in the event that you did not use that feature, well, you could simply hit the little red circle to remove it. So I am going to temporarily remove the walkie talkie app just so you can see how you re add it afterward. So we'll tap that. And then you can see that down here in the more section, you just tap the plus to re-add it back. And when you're done, you tap done. And your control center is all set up, whoops, exactly how you like it. And you can see that I accidentally tapped and turned on water mode again, but that just means I get to make that fun sound. So we'll do that again. Ah, how nice. Now my iPhone's unlocked. And if I got any sweat, I guess, into these speakers on the side, then it was cleared out by the use of that. Folks, that is your look at Control Center on the Apple Watch. I hope it was helpful for you. I hope if you've got an Apple Watch, you just learned a thing or two about how to gain more power and more control over your Apple Watch. Control Center is fantastic. You just have to know how to get to it, how to use the different buttons that are there, and if you want to, remove some of them that you're not using because they're just getting in the way. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Hands on iOS. I know I say it every time, but I'm so thankful that you're out there listening. You can, of course, uh, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. That's youtube.com slash hands on iOS. If you are watching the video because you downloaded it, awesome. Thank you so much. If you aren't, go ahead and subscribe to the show or, hey, send this video to a friend. Let them know that this podcast is out there offering all sorts of advice to make your iOS experience better. It's twit.tv slash HOI, where we've got links to subscribe to the show in so many different formats, audio, video, all the different podcast players, podcast apps, etc. So you can definitely get the show. We're there no matter what podcast app you're using. And uh, if you've got questions, if you've got feedback, if you've got an app that you want me to review or an app category that you want more advice on, whatever it happens to be, if it's got to do with iOS, well, just send me an email, handsonios at twit.tv or micah at twit.tv. That'll work too. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at Micah Sargent. <laughs> I'm pretty much uh, at Micah Sargent on all of the social media platforms and happy to add your question, your feedback, your app category, your uh, concern to the list of, of uh 
topics that I might cover. So thanks so much for tuning in and we will catch you next time on Hands on iOS. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands on Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now.